Did you know Super Awesome Mix has an app? Go to the Apple App Store today and download Super Awesome Mix. It's free. You can start creating and sending your own digital mixtapes in just a few clicks. Also, there's links to our Instagram account and a link where you can follow your favorite podcast. Speaking of which... Welcome back to another Super Awesome Mix, part of the Super Awesome Mix Podcast Network. My name is Matt Sidholm, alongside my co-host and co-founder of Super Awesome Mix, Samer. Abu Salvi, Samer, how are we doing this week? Doing pretty well. Um, listeners, you have to apologize. I'm a little bit nasally. Um, as much as I love the wintertime, with it comes basically every respiratory disease you can imagine. So <laughs> <laughs> I'm coming off of one myself, uh, but doing a lot better. But, you know, it's just the nature of the beast. I, I What can I do? I'm here. I'm it is. But the, but the show must go on, right? Yeah, exactly. Exactly. <laughs> um, and we got our last new music mix of the year. Unbelievable um, that we are here already. We say this at every single new music mix recording, but truly it's like it's kind of a fun way to go through the year um, to kind of milestone it. But then it just seems to fly by because I feel like we just recorded this episode. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, every few weeks we're we're putting one of these up. I mean, this is the eleventh one of the year, so that's one hundred and thirty two new songs that we featured this year on the show. And from that, and maybe any other albums that come out between now and and the end of the year, we're going to do our best of our two part best of. So, kind of the uh, the best twenty four, I think, of the uh, of the year. We'll uh, we'll do those to finish out season three of this show. So, yeah, it's it's unreal that it's already here. It is unreal. Yeah. And there's some late entrance for me that I'm pretty sure are going to make it to best of. It's going to be it's going to be a, a hot year. Um, I, I feel that way, too. Yeah, there's definitely going to there's definitely some that we've included on these mixes that I'm like, that's going on my best of. But then there's a couple new albums coming up here that I'm like, oh, if that gets out before we record, then right. I'm going to throw something on there. Yeah. All right. Well, with that, let's get started. Um, your first pick is Better Place from the Trolls Band Together by NSYNC and Justin Timberlake. Yeah, I like how they had to put and Justin Timberlake with NSYNC. Right. <laughs> <laughs> really wanted to make sure they got his brand name, right? Like, yeah, everybody should be aware <laughs> this isn't just the four other guys from NSYNC, like right. putting out an album. Like Justin Timberlake <laughs> is there. He's singing on the track. Um, yeah, he um, he liked what Fitz and Fitz in the Tantrum did. You know, he's like, I like that model. <laughs> really reiterate that Fitz is in Fitz and the Tantrums. <laughs> yeah, why didn't they go with something clever like Just in Sync, right? Like something oh, com- combining that. the two? I don't yeah. know. Missed Maybe opportunity. That's, yeah, that's a missed opportunity. So this is one of uh, two new songs from bands we haven't heard from in a while on this on this mix for me. Um, this one, like you said, is from the new Trolls movie. I don't know if you've seen those Trolls movie, but they're they're pretty fun. They're very musical. Um, and this new one, Justin Timberlake's been in the first two, and, and this new one, they just really lean heavily into the we have Justin Timberlake in this movie. <laughs> right. I mean, that seemed to really work for the last movie with his like breakout track, you know, um, Can't Stop the Feeling. Like, that blew up. That did. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, for sure. For sure. That was, uh, I think that was the second Trolls movie, maybe. Okay. Got it. Yeah. Yeah, because, I mean, I think I heard that on repeat with my kids. Um, but, no, the Trolls movies, you know, look, uh, I'm not going to tell any adult without kids out there to run out and see these movies because it's not like they're Oscar winners. But if you do have kids, you sit through a lot of bad movies. These are not in that category. Like, it's definitely a quality film. And in this one, they discovered Justin Timberlake's character used to be in a boy band. And so uh, all the NSYNC guys are in the movie kind of as his former bandmates. So they, they kind of have a little fun with that and um, just boy bands in general. So... Um, as a result, every all of us get a brand new NSYNC song, and I think they do a pretty good job. I mean, this is a this is a fun song, and um, I think it sounds really good. So if you like NSYNC, if if you're kind of you know uh, a '90s lover, like I know you are, Samer, maybe not of the boy <laughs> band genre, but um, you know you love '90s music, I think I think you're going to appreciate this. Yeah, I agree. I mean, I. 
after 22 years of not singing together, you wouldn't tell that it's been 22 years, right? I think like they, <laughs> and that that's no small feat. I I I feel like if you if you had me do like a calculus problem from 22 years ago in high school, mm, I'm gonna, yeah. I'm not going to get very far, you know. <laughs> so yeah, that's great. a fair point. Yeah, and I feel <laughs> like if we recorded after, if we took a 22 year break from this show and then jumped right back in, we would be stepping on our lines quite a bit. Right? That would be awful. Yeah, it'd just be terrible. So, <laughs> kudos to them for coming back together. I think it's great, you know, to have the reunion. Uh, there's a lot of nostalgia play there, and I've not seen the Trolls movies, but they do appear like they're like cute and watchable as an adult, and I think that's pretty good for for a kids' movie. Yeah, totally. Again, Sam, don't go run out and see them. You have no reason to see them. But, you know, <laughs> if you're hanging out with kids and the troll movies come on, you're probably going to enjoy yourself. You'll have a smile on your face. Cool. Um, all right. Your first pick. And uh, gosh, this might be the first dubstep song we've had on the mix in three seasons. I'm not sure. But you go with Thrill by Effin. And yeah. I'm not censoring myself. That's the name of the DJ, Effin. <laughs> Literally spelled out E F F I N. Um, yeah, this DJ. Oh my gosh, I don't know how I fell onto this album, but I absolutely love it. I love it for a number of reasons. One, I often, you know, I, I work in code um, for a lot of my, you know, day job work, and it's really nice to kind of have music running that interests me but doesn't like distract me. And I feel like dubstep and any kind of heavy electronic remix music does that very well. But I like this, like in a I like this in a unique way because it's almost like girl talk for dubstep because he samples so much from other songs from films from like all these old style like sound clips basically make their way into his electronic mix and it it works I find it to be like I don't know very um very effective and I've been really enjoying the album it's a good one for me to like hit play on you know, wire in, so to speak, and, and just kind of code away for an hour while the album runs. Um, and I also really like this for like a pre-run amp up because it's so bass heavy. And, you know, I love I love a good bass line before I, I go out and do something challenging. So <laughs> this has been kind of a fun discovery. And yeah, it's like way off the 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 range for what I normally pick. Yeah, this was, uh, you know, a little bit surprising. I mean, because like I said, we don't have a lot of this on our mixes, but I, I liked it. I, I agree with you. I was sitting there in my head listening to it, trying to kind of keep up with the, you know, oh, this was this sample or that was that sample. And even looking at like the website who sampled, I don't even think they have everything on there that he, he went through in the song. So it was really, yeah, I mean, kind of cool. And and not to the extent, I, I agree with your assessment, it wasn't distracting all the changes, right? Like it's done yeah. really well where it, it's kind of a nice surprise, nice little Easter eggs as you go through the song. So yeah, again, not a genre I'm totally into, but also one that I'm like, this was this is very listenable. This is good stuff. Cool. Yeah, I figured I'd mix things up, if you will. Um, and And I'm glad you liked the results. Um, with that track number three, your second pick, that place that makes me happy by the Moss. Yeah, this is a quartet from Salt Lake city and, um, just, I mean, a really cool kind of vibe song about just having a good time, a good outing. Uh, they kind of remind me they've got a sound, at least their guitar sounds a little bit like Lindsey Buckingham, right? So if you've got any like Fleetwood Mac fans out there, I think these guys, you know, there may have been some influence there. Um, the lead vocals are probably even at a higher register than, than what Lindsey Buckingham was, which was, you know, not, not exactly a, a deep bass voice, but, um, but they get even a little higher, but yeah, I think this has the makings of like a hit record. I kind of heard this on sort of a new music show on Sirius XM recently. And I was like, oh, I like this. I'm going to put it on my new music show. And, um, I don't know. I think we could be hearing a lot more of these guys. I really like this song. It has like a really accessible and easy to listen to feel. Um, It's like alt rock indie feel to it. I don't know. It was just like really enjoyable. Um, And I also really chuckled at the line, the market's closed, so we're having wine for dinner, Um, which is great. (laughs) (laughs) Because, you know, I think like, again, it's just painting that picture, as you said, of a bunch of people kind of hanging out and having a nice time and like making a decision like that. Oh, well, I guess we're not going to eat tonight, but we've got wine. You know, <laughs> right, what more, right. Do, what more do we need? <laughs> <laughs> so I really enjoyed the song. Yeah, this was a group that I wasn't familiar with, but I had a lot of fun listening to this one. 
All right, now a group that I think you're more familiar with, probably everyone's more familiar with, is track four, The American Dream is Killing Me by Green Day. Yeah, oh my goodness, a new album called Saviors coming uh, next year. So this is the first single, I imagine, or one of the several singles to drop off this new album, actually. Um, I think it's interesting because it's almost like what Metallica did with 72 Seasons to kind of go back to their roots, their original sound. I feel like Green Day's doing that here. Um, they sound like old Green Day, like original Green Day, which is awesome. And there's tackling a lot of the same things. You know, Green Day has never been one to shy away from kind of like talking about political things and being annoyed at stuff. And here we are with, you know, the title, The American Dream is Killing Me. Basically a great song asking that question is like, what's happening right now, you know, in America? <laughs> like, which when I reflected on it, I feel like you could ask that question about this country literally since 1776. I feel like... <laughs> From its inception, there's a group of people walking around in these in these colonies and now states being like, what is happening? I don't like any of this. Um, I think that's just the nature of, of our country. <laughs> but here well, we are. Yeah, that's that's a great point, actually, because I think people always imagine like, OK, right now is as insane or as stressful as it's ever been. But like if you kind of go back and you know, look at different eras, like there's a little bit of that sprinkled throughout our history. So for sure. Yeah, yeah. That, that's a really good point is we, we can always kind of turn around and be like, this is insanity. Like this is the low point or this is the, <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> right. yeah, okay. <laughs> yeah, I think we're, we are a, a nation of, of peaks and valleys for sure. So <laughs> we um, are. And yeah, <laughs> probably a little bit of a unnecessary panic at times as well. <laughs> Absolutely. But but the song is great. And I'm happy to hear Green Day um, and their original sound. I've always loved that. I agree. Yeah, this this sounded immediately like old Green Day. You know, the American Idiot album was 2004. So wow. like that album's almost 20 years old. And you think like that was kind of a shot across the bow with like what's going on in this country. And here they are 20 years on. <laughs> it's like, OK, right. 20 years ago, I was just calling you stupid. Now you're killing me. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> progress <laughs> yeah exactly maybe so not I, the direction we want <laughs> <laughs> for sure yeah there's still uh there's still some frustration there but yeah if you like if you like green day sound i mean this is this is really straight ahead classic green day which is which i agree with you is awesome to hear um and still a really strong theme that i think everyone can relate to on some level right yes, kind of no yeah. matter I mean, I imagine Green Day leans one side more than the other, but um, no matter what side you're on, you could probably hear the song and, and agree with some sentiments expressed here. Yeah, absolutely. All right. Um, the next track, track number five, you went with Double Life by Cold War Kids. Yeah, um, I love this song. And um, this is off a new album of theirs. And it's just a real straight ahead rock song. So I do like that. I, I really like their sound in general, Cold War Kids. Um, but yeah, I think this one's kind of about the, the tear of, you know, on the one hand, they are these public figures and musicians and that's their day job. And then they also have like a family and that they're just a husband and father at home and how, uh, those things kind of run together and, uh, how difficult it is to kind of transition between one or the other. And while not all of us are celebrities and family people, I think we all kind of lead a little bit of, uh, this double life between, our work and our home life, who we are here versus who we are there or even within different groups of people. So I think it's a great song. Yeah, I like had not remembered Cold War Kids until, you know, obviously playing the song and I was like, oh, I actually really liked them. So I was happy that you, you know, brought this under the new music mix. Um, really enjoy the song. I find it to be very catchy. And I do like that, that, you know, again, another theme that I think is kind of universal is like having that double life, if you will. And it doesn't have to be so stark, as you said, you know, you don't need to be like a super um, you know, popular person and then just like a regular person, quote unquote. Um, but you could, you know, I mean, like the show Severance explores like the life between your workplace and your home life as being two separate lives. And they took that to an extreme, um, which I can't, I can't wait for that show to come back. Just as That is a great show. Yeah, that really is definitely good. a show. Everybody should go see. <laughs> yeah, Apple so TV. Yeah, Not a sponsor. TV. Not a sponsor yet. But not yet, not yet. But no, it was a really good song. Yeah. And I, I was happy to listen to them. So this is cool. I liked it. Yeah, for sure. Um, all right. Your next pick. And I almost picked this song. So I'm glad you threw it on here because it just missed the cut for me. It is 
Pretty Vicious by The Struts. Yeah, oh, this is so good. I had not heard The Struts before, um, but apparently they opened for Foo Fighters during a concert at some point, um, concert tour, which makes a lot of sense to me. They are a great just rock band. I love the song, uh, you know, with um, this shares the, the album name as well, Pretty Vicious. And yeah, I, I really like the line here. Like when you talk and everybody listens, then you walk and everybody whispers. And I think that's a really clever way of indicating like you're the type of person that will, you know, people are going to listen to when you talk like to them. But then the second you leave, they're going to talk about you and they're going to talk about you kind of behind your back, you know. So it's like that that double edged sword of kind of being someone that, you know, can command a room. But at the same time, you're going to be a target. So I think that that's pretty awesome. Um, and kind of goes with probably the you know the title pretty vicious, but I just really like how smooth the song is, and I've I've been really enjoying listening to this band. Yeah, you're right. Great. I mean, just straight ahead rock band. Uh, love their sound, but yeah, you're exactly right. I think the the message here, where it's almost like it kind of reminds me of the song right before it with Double Life, where it's like you are this sort of figure that people do listen to, but. Along with that, you got to have people kind of talking about you. So there's a little bit of a double life there that you've kind of, kind of, you kind of have to reconcile, right? It's like you're respected, but also probably, probably not respected in some ways. Yeah, exactly. All right. Track number seven. We're going to take a hard turn here in terms of sound. Um, and it is My Name by Jeezy. Yeah, this is a. Uh... I mean, there, there's no, we talked about this a couple weeks ago. There's no shortage of cover songs, right? We talked about that when we did our most recent cover mix, but there's also no shortage of songs that will get you fired up or ready for battle. And yes. I think go ahead and add this one to the list of, of songs in that category. Um, I mean, just so many great lines in this one. I mean, this is one that I feel like I've already listened to a handful of times since it came out and, and will probably continue to listen to. A um, couple great lines in here. That's word to Donatello, them. I came from the sewer. Okay. Great little Teenage Ninja, Mutant Ninja Turtle. Shout out there. I um, also like this one. It's a little deeper and some great advice. When they show you who they are, damn right, you best believe. And that's something I, I love because, you know, how often have we all made the mistake of just kind of giving people second chances, third chances, fourth chances, and and they're the whole time with their behavior, they're screaming at you exactly who they are, but you just right. don't believe them, and you keep going back to that well. And uh, so yeah, so so some fun in this one, but also some great advice, and uh, just a great song overall. Get you fired up. Yeah. Oh my goodness. Yeah. Super bass heavy rap song for sure. Feels I, I wrote it feels like a strut mix candidate. You know, like a song that's just going to get you walking tall and and walking confidently. Um, I also highlighted the Donatello line. I love that. But then the other one that I really like is like, that's like the kitchen sink talking crazy about the ocean, which I think is great. <laughs> <laughs> like, who are you kitchen sink? Like you hold, you know, a, a fraction of a percentage of what the ocean can do. So I think that is like such a great diss against someone if you ever need one. <laughs> like the, kitchen sink talking crazy about the ocean that that is awesome that's great that is awesome i like that um all right track eight did i mention i'm sorry by Petey. (laughs) matt all the time i mean we covered this before the recording it's okay all right oh you're talking about the song yeah yeah i'm talking about the song i do feel bad all the time i'm always apologizing yes (laughs) Um, yeah, so of course the song, did I mention I'm sorry? Yeah, I really liked the lyrics of this song. I think, you know, this is one that kind of tells a story. Um, they sound almost like All American Rejects. They give me that like pop punk vibe from the early 2000s, which is another reason I like it. But I just kind of like the, the I don't know, it's just funny to me to listen to these because he's saying like, did I mention I'm sorry? And he's like, I don't know why I said that was being sarcastic. I was trying to make you feel bad, a childish tactic. Um that I tend to use when I see something in you that I hate in me because I'm just sick of saying I'm sorry, which I think is also very honest. You know, he's like kind of picking on this person, but in reality, it's like his own uh, insecurities that are coming out. And that's mm-hmm. why he's picking on that person. So I think it's kind of funny, you know, especially the way that he sings it because he changes his like pitch a little bit whenever he, re- you know, sings the chorus. But it was great. Um, just like a nice little throwback sound and and a song that I enjoyed listening to. Yeah, the note I made after listening to this a couple times is this is like upbeat Elliot Smith. Nice. Yeah, I could see that. I like that. Because <laughs> it's like kind of a cool story. Like it, it's a well-written song, 
but but definitely like almost ending on a happier note than than an Elliott Smith song would have would have ended. Um, but yeah, I, I love the sound of this one and the vibe of it. And then, you know, at the beginning, he talks about making up an excuse to like skip a party. And I've definitely done that more than once. Yeah. Uh, so <laughs> I like that little, little call out. Cause I'm like, yeah, I have definitely been there for sure. Yeah, exactly. Who hasn't? Um, all right. Track number nine. Oh, I loved this track. This might be my favorite of all the ones that you picked and it is every day by Q. Yeah, Q is short for Q Stephen Marsden. He's from Broward County, Florida. Um, pretty straightforward love song here. And I think the best way to describe it is like, it almost sounds like a reggae song without the steel drum. Yes. So it, it's not something you're going to immediately connect to like reggae music, which I like because I don't love the sound of a steel drum. <laughs> okay. <laughs> topic for another day but it doesn't i don't love that part of reggae music um but yeah he's got such a great voice here and like i said just a real straight ahead love song here talking about how much he cares for this person um and just really the whole album here is really cool and i think it's just carried by his voice um so definitely worth you know it's a, it's a newer artist that i think is definitely worth checking out yeah i loved loved this track um he was born into a family of Jamaican musicians, so there's the influence there. Um, his father apparently was a reggae producer, and his mother played keyboards uh, for dance hall artists. So I think he definitely was around it enough that that became really important in his life, and and you hear it in the song. But um, I, I liked it. It was like such a happy vibe. I feel like this is one of these like sunny day, you know, you're sitting on a lawn, um, nothing to do really, just enjoying yourself, and you could play a song like this and, and have a smile on your face. So I really like that. All right, track 10, you go with Say Whoa by Marshmallow and Nicky Jam. Yeah, Marshmallow basically put together like a Spanish mixtape, like a Spanish music <laughs> mixtape um, on this album, which is amazing. And so this is one of my favorites off of it um, with Nicky Jam. So he's got some incredible collaborations on this whole album. But this like kind of reminds me of the type of music I would play when I was a spin instructor, like you were instructed always to never have a moment of quiet in the spin room because it's kind of depressing if you're just sitting there in the silence, like, you know, on your on your bike, like pedaling before mm -hmm. class. Yeah. You always wanted some kind of higher energy, not super high because you're going to save that for the class, but something to kind of start to get you awake. And this is the type of music I would absolutely put on that playlist um, because I think it's perfect for kind of like pre-dance, you know, vibes, like getting you getting you not fired up, but getting you warm, let's say. Like, it's, it's good kind of warm-up music, and I think he does a great job with that. But this was just, like, a great hard-hitting album in terms of a lot of collaboration, so I really like this. Yeah, I went through the translated lyrics. Like you said, it's all in Spanish. And, I mean, it's just a straight party song, you know? I yeah. mean, <laughs> it, it's right. five in the morning. We're going to keep this going. Um and, and really, without the translation, I think you're going to get that vibe. I also like to check the translation just in case. We're, sure. <laughs> we're treading into topics we shouldn't be. Uh, yeah. But no, this one matched the vibe, uh, even if you don't know Spanish, that you're just hearing from the, uh, from the version straight up. So, um, yeah, really fun song, really great party song. And also, you know, great little preview. We've got a New Year's Eve party mix coming up here. I don't think that one's going to be on it, but... Um, you know, I mean, we're going to have some great party music for you soon enough. Yeah, that one is that mix is really good. I'm excited to talk to that one. But for now, you know, we'll wait until then. And track number 11. <laughs> this is well done. That's well is done. Now, <laughs> is now and then by the Beatles. Yeah, I never thought when we started this show and started doing new music mixes that I would get a chance to introduce a new song by the Beatles. But here we are. Um, okay, are. so a little bit of a story behind this one, and there's like a 10-minute documentary on uh, Max or HBO's streaming service. I'm, I'm not used to calling it just Max, but because everyone's like, what is that? And I'm like, it's HBO. So um, yeah, it's like a little 10-minute documentary about this, but, but essentially what happened, it's like around 1977, John Lennon sat down at his home, right, and was just playing around. And he wrote this song and he recorded a little demo on a cassette tape, like on this little cassette tape recorder um, with just his vocals and the piano. Well, um, dies a few years later. And then eventually these tapes get into the hands of Paul McCartney. 
So it's like 1995. Okay, so a good 15 years or so after uh, John Lennon passes away. And Paul McCartney's like, let's, he's getting the band together to record some stuff. And it's like, let's look at this song that John wrote. And so at that point, George Harrison is still alive and he's got Ringo Starr and they get together and they, they record some tracks for this. But the cassette recording was so bad that all you heard was like the piano. You couldn't pull John's vocals out of the track, right? And it's 1995, right. so the technology just wasn't there. Fast forward to 2023, literally this year, Paul McCartney's like, I think we could pull this off. <laughs> <And> <laughs> revisits this track. And now the technology exists to separate out these two tracks. So we get the piano. So that's John Lennon playing the piano. And those are John Lennon's actual vocals. And they amplify them a little bit to make sure it, it sounds right. But then they pull out what they recorded from 1995. And Paul's like, I think I could do the bass line better. <laughs> so he records, <laughs> re-records the bass line. He includes some of George Harrison's guitar, but then also does a little slide guitar himself to include in the song. And then, hey, Ringo's still alive. So we're going to get Ringo to do some drums here. Um, so this is actual, like, this is, I mean, it's really kind of amazing that all of this comes together to put out a brand new single by the Beatles. And they're calling it the last single, uh, the last new song by the Beatles. Um, but just a remarkable story and just, I think, really cool that technology has has kind of preserved some of this stuff. And I wonder if it won't do the same for maybe some other artists if if they see this and then kind of dig back through some of their catalog to to revive some old work. Yeah, I I loved reading about how they pulled this off. Um, so I'm happy that you kind of walked through it for all of our listeners, because it really is like incredible to think about like the technology to be able to take a really old like lo-fi cassette tape and understand what is a voice and what is piano and so you could actually separate those two things out and then bring it together for a song and the track itself is beautiful like i think it's a really really nice beatles track it's absolutely um i mean it's just a stunning track and and pitchfork funny enough uh, you know subscribed to their newsletter and one of the titles of one of them recently was beatles a band to watch which i really enjoyed <laughs> But, you know, you already spoiled it. I don't think they're going to have any new music coming out. I think this is it. Um, but, you know, nonetheless, I, I agree. They are a band to watch. <laughs> I, I feel bad for our friends at the uh, Ranking the Beatles show because they, they might have to redo the rankings, like depending <laughs> right. on where this one falls. We'll have to reach out to them and see what's this, what where this one falls yeah. on the rankings. Yeah, yeah, what does this do to everything? Yeah, they'll have to go back and re-record all of their own episodes. So. <laughs> <laughs> redo the numbers. Um all right, last track, uh, track 12, um, you go with First Person Shooter by Drake featuring J. Cole. Yeah, I mean, this one is like, I'll be honest, it's almost like a lazy pick, right? Because like, obviously, everyone knows that Drake has new music um, because he's one of these mega artists that when he releases anything, like the whole internet is informed. Like, I feel like even if you aren't a Drake fan, you know that Drake has a new album. Um, but I just really like this track. And again, you know, I've mentioned this a couple of times on the show. If I see like certain artist names together i'm gonna pick that track and so here we are with j cole really which is what was drawing my attention with drake and i was like yeah i'm gonna i'm gonna listen to it i'm gonna love it and here we are me putting on this new music mix so <laughs> that's how that happened <laughs> i did right yeah this is not surprising that this showed up when when drake and j cole get together well one drake was probably gonna make an appearance but definitely if he's gonna feature j cole that's gonna show up on one of our mixes so yeah, not not too surprised by this one. Um, yeah, just just a great song. I mean, two guys who who always have some great rhymes. Uh, one line I'll call out: "It's like we recruited your homies to be deep in demon deacons. We got them attending your wake," which uh, I think is a great shout out to Wake Forest University and their mascot. So, <laughs> well done there. Well written for sure. That is really good. The other thing that I liked that I was going to call out is uh, he's got a line in here dissing people who take pictures on Gulf Streams, uh, which, of course, is the maker of private jets. He apparently owns his own 767, a giant Boeing, like, a, oh, wow. like an international carrier plane. Um, so <laughs> that's when you know that you are pretty successful. Um, as he mentions, he considers himself to be the GOAT because he's actually getting very near to be one of the most successful artists ever. 
um, himself. And, and I think having your own Boeing, you know, I'm going to probably say I think it's a little wasteful. But, you know, I understand if, if you're in the game to kind of be showy and tell everyone that you're better than all of them. Sure. Get yourself get yourself a really large plane. He's starting his own Uber-like plane surface, right? So he's kind of renting it out to people on the weekends, I think, and trying to nice. make some okay. money back on it. Sure. Yeah. yeah. It's more of an investment. I mean, you're right. You're right. I'm judging. Yeah. 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 Come on. Give him a break. Give him a break. <laughs> All right. Well, there you have it. Our last new music mix of 2023. Next month, we will take on our best of featuring some tracks, uh, maybe from today, but they're certainly throughout our new music mixes, as well as probably a couple new ones altogether. So we will get to work on that and uh, just a few more mixes for us. Um, the rest of 2023, we're off next week for Thanksgiving, but we'll still be working on new mixes. So for Samer, this is Matt, and we'll see you next time. Super Awesome Mix is brought to you by DLM. Make shopping easy with DLM, the one-stop shop for all your casual clothing needs. Shop dlmsupplycode.com and enter the promo code AWESOME at checkout to save 15% off your first purchase. That's dlmsupplyco.com.